Reading closely and writing to learn. Poetry, poets, and becoming writers. Unit 1, Lesson 5. Guiding questions. These are questions that you'll be thinking about throughout the entire module. What makes a poem a poem? What inspires writers to write poetry? Learning targets. I can explain what Jack understands about poetry. I can prepare for the mid-unit assessment by pre-reading the section of the novel and the poem The Pasture by Robert Frost. First, you'll be pre-reading a section of Love That Dog by Sharon Creech. While you read, think about the following questions. What makes a poem a poem? What inspires writers to write poetry? While you read, take notice of what Jack is learning about poetry as he writes his own. Follow along with your book if you have it. Page 20, January 10th. I really, really, really did not get the pasture poem you read today. I mean, somebody's going out to the pasture to clean the spring and to get the little tottery calf while he's out there and he isn't going to be gone long and he wants you? Who is you to come to? I mean, really. Page 21. And you said that Mr. Robert Frost, who wrote about the pasture, was also the one who wrote about those snowy woods and the miles to go before he sleeps? Well, I think Mr. Robert Frost has a little too much time on his hands. Page 22, January 17th. Remember the wheelbarrow poem you read the first week of school? Maybe the wheelbarrow poet was just making a picture with words. And someone else, like maybe his teacher, typed it up, and then people thought it was a poem because it looked like one typed up like that. Page 23. And maybe that's the same thing that happened with Mr. Robert Frost. Maybe he was just making pictures with words about the snowy woods and the pasture, and his teacher typed them up, and they looked like poems, so people thought they were poems. Like how you did with the blue car things and reading the small poems thing on the board. Page 24. On the board, typed up, they looked like poems. And the other kids are looking at them, and they think they really are poems. And they're all saying, who wrote that? Now we're going to read the poem, The Pasture, that Jack references in the novel. It's written by Robert Frost. While you read, think about the following questions. What makes a poem a poem? What inspires writers to write poetry? And while you read, take notice of this poem. What characteristics of poetry do you see? Follow along with your book if you have it. The Pasture by Robert Frost. I'm going out to clean the pasture spring. I'll only stop to rake the leaves away and wait to watch the water clear I may. I shan't be gone long. You come too. I'm going out to fetch the little calf that's standing by the mother. It's so young it totters when she licks it with her tongue. I shan't be gone long. You come too. The Pasture by Robert Frost. I'm going out to clean the pasture spring. I'll only stop to rake the leaves away and wait to watch the water clear I may. I shan't be gone long. You come too. I'm going out to fetch the little calf that's standing by the mother. It's so young it totters when she licks it with her tongue. I shan't be gone long. You come too. Let's review what makes a poem a poem. In lesson two, you read The Red Wheelbarrow by William Carlos Williams. And the characteristics of poetry that we saw in that poem was structure. We saw lines and stanzas. We noticed that this poem was free verse. It meant it was a poem written with no rhyme. It had no regular rhythm. And the author used imagery, words like glazed and white and red, things that help the reader visualize what's happening in the poem. In lesson three, we read the poem, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, which was also written by Robert Frost. This poem actually rhymed, which meant the words that were at the end of the lines sounded the same as some of the words on the other lines, words like no, though, snow. The poem used some repetition, where they repeated words, the last two lines were repeated. There was a regular rhythm to this poem, 
I mean, it had sort of a beat to it. And this poem was narrative. It told a story. In lesson four, you read the poem Dog by Valerie Wirth. Here again was another example of a poem that was considered free verse. There was no rhyme or regular rhythm to the poem. It did use a lot of punctuation marks to help us know how to read the poem. And the poem used a lot of imagery or words that create pictures in the mind. So now looking back at the poem The Pastor by Robert Frost, what characteristics of poetry do you see that this poem has? In other words, what makes this poem a poem? And you want to have your own thoughts about it. You can also go back and look what Jack thinks about Robert Frost's poetry and think about what he says about it. Those are both ways that you can think about this poem in preparation for your middle of unit assessment. The Pasture by Robert Frost. I'm going out to clean the pasture spring. I'll only stop to rake the leaves away and wait to watch the water clear I may. I shan't be gone long. You come too. I'm going out to fetch the little calf that's standing by the mother. It's so young it totters when she licks it with her tongue. I shan't be gone long. You come too. All right, now at this point, there are some questions I want you to ask yourself. And you can pause the video at any time to give yourself some time to think about responses to these questions. You don't need to record them anywhere. Just have those thoughts in your mind. What are your thoughts or feelings about poetry now? Have they changed after reading the book and the poem? Are your thoughts and feelings similar or different from Jack's? So again, go ahead and pause the video to think about the answers to these questions. End of lesson five.